Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. So today we are going to jump into episode seven on designing your power supply. Yikes! Look at that octopus. Um, yeah, they probably shouldn't look like that when they're finished project, but you know, just for demonstration, I'm kind of hardwiring it, and uh, it's working out okay so far. But the big question is, is how many of these big old capacitors, it's really not that large, you know, um, but how many of these bad boys do you need to get a good power supply for, say, like an audio amplifier? So maybe we'll use that as an example. It's really just the wattage that, and the transient power that will drive this. So let's discuss that. And I'll bring you over to the notebook We'll look at some math and we'll look at some waveforms and we'll see what adding more capacitors or less capacitors do for you. And we'll see how close the calculated value comes to the actual values, okay? <laughs> Is this what we need? Wow, look at that beast. Now that's that's what I call the capacitor bank. These are these are ten thousand microfarads each. And we got what do we got? Eight of them? So there's four per side. Okay? So that is a nice size capacitor bank. And look at that. It comes with bridge rectifiers too. Yeah. I think we'll plug that in to see what that looks like. Let's do it. Okay, guys. So as far as the math goes, we're going to call this a capacitor selection power supply design part seven. Uh, design goes, say, 200 watts output power per side. We're just showing one side here, but the same would apply for both sides. And the 200 watts is for a transient case. We're going to say if an audio amplifier is the application and 4 ohms is a transient, then it would be 200 watts. And 8 ohms would be 100 watts for steady state. So is a 250 VA transformer big enough? You know, if we're thinking 100 watts per side, then that's 200 VA, but there's power factor that we're going to have to take into account here. Is the resistance of the windings in the transformer such that at 200 watts transient will lose too much voltage? We'll have to find that out. The other part is how many of these capacitors, we just happen to have 6800 microfarad capacitors on hand, so how many of those will it take to meet these specs. Well, the transformer rating is 25 volts RMS at 5 amps out. So that's, you know, 125 watts. So if our VA matches our wattage output, then it says we sh can get 125 watts on each one. But we know that our VA is not going to be one. It's going to be some fraction. Power factor is going to not allow us to get that full power out. So now if we want to find out what the peak voltage of that output winding is, so if we were able to use capacitors to keep the voltage right at peak with no ripple, it'd be 35.36 volts peak. But we know we're going to have some ripple, right? Um, now, the equation for power is power is equal to V squared divided by R. So we solve that by multiplying R over by, to P, so P times R, and then taking the square root of both sides, so we get V by itself. So V equals square root of P times R, which is 100 watts times 8 ohms, it is 28.28 volts DC. So we can't have the voltage drop below 28.28, or we won't be able to, you know, we'll end up clipping our waveform. For the 200 watt case, it's in the 4 ohms. It's 100 times 8, 200 times 4, it's the same. So it's the same voltage. So, you know, the idea is the power amplifier is putting out music. It doesn't really care what the note is or how much power or how much impedance the resist uh, the speaker is. It wants to keep uh, a continuous waveform, whatever that frequency of that music is. And, you know, to get that much power in the 4 ohms, we need 28.28 volts. Okay, so sorry about this. <laughs> that looks pretty bad. So for the capacitor equations, I equals C times change voltage divided by change of time. dV dt. That's what that means. Okay, so that's 28.28 volts divided by 
4 ohms gives us I, which is 7 amps. Solving for dV, we have 35.36 volts peak, and we can drop down to 28.28 before we're going to clip our, our you know, waveform on our music. So we can drop 7 volts. And that time that we can do that is in between charge cycles, which since we're full bridge rectified, we get um, 2 times 60 hertz, which is 120 hertz, so we get 8.3 milliseconds. You know, if you're somewhere where you get 50 hertz, that'd be 100 hertz here. So you'd have a little bit more time between. Not much, but a little bit. You put these things here into this equation, and we want to manipulate that equation so we're solving for the size of capacitor. So we just cross multiply, which puts dt times i, and dv underneath i. So we put these numbers in here, 7 amps for i that we solved here, and we end up with 8.3 millifarads, or 8300 microfarads. So we're going to need two of these 6800 mic caps to, for this um, 200 watt worst case, because I used the 4 ohms, which is the worst case. These are all kind of linear equations, right? So if I put 8, that would have been half the current, and it would have been half the current over here, so that would have been about four microfarads. So for 100 watts, that's plenty big. But for 200 watts, we're a little bit undersized. We need two of those. All right, guys, so let's go through this setup, okay? Now, we've done this before in other videos, but I'll just go through quickly. We're coming in for the power. This orange plug in the back of the power meter here. It's a little small power meter it tells me uh, voltage I can uh, look at current and uh, power or phase angle so I will um, I'll write these numbers down um, I'm going to be showing you the scope for most of the, the measurements I think and uh, so what I do is I come on, out of my power cord that I made here okay and I just got to curl up here to kind of straighten things up a little bit. And then it, the black one comes out and goes through the switch. And from the switch it goes through a fuse. And then into the transformer. And there's two primary windings. And, and I put them in parallel for the US for 115 or 120 volts. And if you're at you know, 220 you would put them in series. But anyway, we've got them in parallel here. Okay, so blue and uh, purple. Now the red wire comes out, goes through the thermistor, so the red one comes out, goes through the thermistor, and then comes to the gray and brown wire. So that's how it goes to the primary side of the transformer. And then on the secondary side, what I have here is one of the windings I am not doing right now. I'm only doing one side of the transformer, so one side is orange and yellow, and that one I'm just got taped up and I'll just pull it aside. And the other one's red and black. And then the red and black go to this big bridge rectifier. You can see there. Big old bridge rectifier. The way those bridge rectifiers work, as I showed before, is they go to opposing corners. A little wiggly AC sign. And then on the opposite corners I have the output windings. And I have a red wire and a black wire coming off. And I'm using these clips. I've got the wire wrapped around the poles, and I'm using the clips to, for, you know, just an extra uh, protection thing to hold them down tight because I don't want to solder right now. So, because this, I'm just putting it out like this as demonstration, then it eventually I'll go on a board. So what I have is I have two capacitors. From the red winding, it goes to this terminal. One of them goes to this capacitor, and one goes to the output over here. And then I can tie this capacitor, which is out of the circuit right now. I can tie this red one in there to add in a second capacitor in parallel. Okay. And then on the black side, he comes out, goes to this cap. He goes to this block, which ties to this capacitor, but this capacitor is not going anywhere, so nothing. You know, it's an open circuit. And then the output of the black one comes over to here. And the load is this uh, yellow and green wire. Yellow's my positive and green's my 
uh, return. And then I have a THC meter hooked up here, but I think I'm going to ignore that for this uh, video, okay? Because we're going to just focus on the size capacitor we need. Then I have my scope probe, okay? So it's a pretty simple hook. I mean, I took off my current probe too. I, I want to kind of simplify, uh, kind of just narrow it down to um, what size capacitor we need. And I'm going to use this meter. It's tied to the output of the transformer over here on the bridge. So that's just for reference, and I'll write those numbers down. And then the scope will give me the RMS numbers on the you know on the load side so then I can kind of compare them to what's coming off the transformer that's the connection that's the hookup now the load is an active load it's this uh, yellow and green wire let's go up to the scope and look at that and by the way when I hook up this capacitor these are 6800 microfarad caps 63 volt caps uh, in video number six I, I went through this once before and I kind of showed close-ups and also I showed a close-up of the wiring of this, which maybe I'll do that real quick right now. Hold on a sec, let me just bring it over here without tearing everything up. Okay, so I got in kind of close here. I hope you can see that well. The, uh, as I said, the blue and the violet are tied together over here. And the brown and the gray are tied as the, the other side. And I'm not using a, a safety ground or an earth ground. I'm just uh, going into the primary site. So basically, I got a loop. So it doesn't really matter which one hot or neutral is tied to at this point, okay? Um, as far as the dots go, the black and the red are, is the winding I'm using on this side. Only one secondary. I'm not using the other secondary right now. So everything I do on this secondary applies to this secondary. I would just uh, use another bridge rectifier and another set of caps for that for that output okay so then that way and these are totally isolated from each other you can see that they're just everything's galvanically isolated here so these can be two plus voltages or for an audio amplifier you can have a plus minus okay and then in that case you don't necessarily have to have another bridge rectifier you can just tie the red and orange together okay I show that in the previous audio power amp fire design which we'll, we'll go through that too in this uh, probably video eight okay <laughs> one after this one we'll have a series of these things all right so there we go there's close up i'm going to put it back and i'm going to take the camera to the scope all right guys i'm going to show you one safety precaution i'm taking just because i never really fully trust aluminum electrolytic capacitors <laughs> i got my face shield here so I just end up laying that across there. So when I'm flipping the switch on and off and playing around, in case I had a bad cap or something, I don't have a big old guy that's going to blow up on me. So, yeah, just thought I'd share that with you. I do actually use some safety precautions. <laughs> okay, guys, so let's go through the setup quickly. I've got channel 1 is the only channel I'm going to use. Not really using this guy. I can just disconnect him. Okay, so he's the only one highlighted. When I go channel one, I've got DC coupling, one mega ohm uh, impedance. The scope is on the times 10 position, probe times 10, and it's voltage. It's not current, so I'm looking at voltage. And full bandwidth, verts off, and so. And the position is a um, set. Let's see, where is the position right now? Okay, so I'm set right there. Okay, so I just push this in. I think what I was looking at was a trigger there before. So I'm just going to pull this all the way down the bottom of the screen. Right there it's saying I'm minus 8.6. I'm just going to pull it down to uh, maybe 10 volts right there. Okay, so it's just two, uh, two divisions below. Actually, 
I'm at 5 volts per division, so I really want to get this actually the bottom of the screen. So I'm going to go down minus 20. So that's minus 20 from the center of the screen. So 20 volts would be there. 25, 30, 35. Okay. So now I can, because I, I expect to see, you know, over 30 volts. And the trigger is set up here. See, it's set at 29.4. I'll just. I'll bring that down a little bit. I'll put 20 volts, I guess. All right, so it's five volts uh, per division. The trigger's in the center screen here, and we're at 20 milliseconds per division, and we're triggering on the following edge. So I think we're all set up on scope. And by the way, the red, I've got the math turned on. So the math, FFT, and I've got it set at 100 hertz per division, and the center is set at 460 hertz. So we're going to see uh, 60 or 120 hertz over here. So I just thought I'd turn that on so you can see the noise that uh, bread direct fire generates on the output. We're going to just kind of keep an eye on that just you know for fun. But we'll, uh, we're going to focus on the voltage, okay? So let's turn off the menus. All right, now that's the scope. Let's look at the load. All right, so the Kunkin, it is set up at constant watts CW. I have a video showing how to set up these different modes, but our CW is constant wattage, and I got that set for 100 watts. Well, 100, I guess I could zero that out. Okay, so it's set for 100 watts. Now if I push that to say set, it's just ready. Now I just have to turn it on, turn on the watts. But I found that if I push the set, I can come over here and I can change the wattage on the fly after I've turned it on. So let's apply power. When we turn on power, look, the cap right now is charged to one volt. It's just self-charged. It's just been sitting there. It's kind of self-charged itself up. So if I turn on the load, it'll just discharge that. Now I'm going to hit the switch and we'll watch the voltage turn on there. Just triple checking everything, seeing everything's okay. Okay, let's do it. All right, so you can see the voltage on the Kunkin is 38 volts. That's what it sees from the, the output of the power supply. There's no load on it right now, so there's no current. It's just ready to go. I just have to hit this. Now you can see the scope. It says it's 38 volts as well, so it agrees with this. Peak to peak ripple is 800 millivolts, so it's pretty small. Peak to peak ripple. It's pretty hard to see on that. So, see it going on here. Now look at this wave, the harmonics, it's pretty clean right now. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn on the load. Oh, by the way, the astrometer, it's saying 28.5 volts RMS Come now the transformer. The transformer is rated for 25 volts, right? And right now it's 28.5 because there's no load on it. So that's kind of the regulation of the transformer. They'll go a little high when they're not loaded. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn on this load. Alright, so you see the voltage drop here, it's down around, now you notice it dropped and then it slowly climbed back up, There's that's showing the current that's going to the output, the, this load is drawing. Now my Astro is down to 26.7, so it's still slightly above what the transformer says rated for, 25, so it's doing pretty well. Now the power meter, it says I have 122.8 volts going in. and the wattage is 119, but you're only seeing 100 watts there, right? Because this 119 is showing 1.236 amps and a power factor of 0.78. I'm going to write those numbers down real quick. Okay, so if you look here on the screen, you can see the ripple there. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and capture this and turn off the power supply just to let it cool down. So you see the loads voltages everything goes zero. I'll turn this off. Now let me zoom in on the screen a little tighter. Alright so you see the harmonics coming off of that and you can see the ripple here. So now this ripple here let's bring up the cursors time channel one. So I'll put this one on the peak right there. You see 34.2 I just roll it across there until I see the highest number. 34.2 volts and then I'll put this one in a valley. Whoops, let me get that back there. Okay, select that guy, put him on a valley. That is 31.4 is a low spot. I'll just tie them together. 
Okay, now you can see it's 3.6 volts peak to peak. I'll write that down. It was kind of moving between 3.4 and 3.6 um, when it was moving. And then uh, 33 volts RMS. That's what the scope's saying that this is doing. And 34.2. So we got 34.2 and 31.4 is a peak and valley. So that's it. This says 2.8. So between these two, that captures 2.8. But the scope found a worst case is a 3.6, you know, across here somewhere. <laughs> All right, so one thing to note is the peak, the 31.4, that's above the 28.28 volts we need to maintain, you know, so that in an audio amplifier, if we're doing 100 watts, we're not clipping. So we need 28.28. That's the voltage that we don't want to go below. Now what I can do is I can go to these bars here and I can move these bars up and I'll put I'll put this bottom one right here 28.28 if I can well put 21 28.3 so this bottom bar is the uh, the threshold we don't want to go below that and then I'll just move this one up so right now we've got about 2.9 volts headroom so that's looking pretty good as far as maintaining our our voltage to get a hundred watts or to get our power out 100 or 200 watts you know as long as we don't go below this line here we're going to be able to maintain our power without clipping the voltage and on our equation for capacitor this uh, 3.6 volts peak to peak or let me tie these two cursors together bring it up so what I'm going to do is just get the uh, what it looks like across there and that looks like about 3.6 volts just about what this thing said so 3.6 volts peak to peak but that ramp right there is what we use for that ramp and the time of that ramp is what we use for our equation for the capacitor charging so if we want to get the time we can do that move this guy over to this valley and get the time well get it to this peak here we can see the time there is five milliseconds here I'm just gonna put these cursors back to um, where they were before so we can monitor that 20.3 is the bottom one and right now we have about three volts of headroom okay so let's turn the power back on and let's go to 200 watts and see what we get here I'll turn the scope back on to run turn this guy on and let's turn the 100 watts on okay we're back to 100 watts when we first turn on it kind of sags the thermistor is dropping a little bit of voltage i think it heats up and allows you know the full voltage to come to the transformer so that's why i think we get the little rise in voltage it doesn't take very long for it to kind of settle out on an earlier video in this series where i showed adding the thermistor we kind of show that time lag okay now let's go to 200 watts so see that's flashing I should just be able to go up you'll see that sawtooth get larger in value and drop overall in, uh, amplitude let's do it there we go okay that's 200 watts so that's steady state so let's go ahead and freeze things I'll clip that and I'll turn off the power that the keep the <laughs> Transfer, keep the power supply from getting too hot. All right, so now let me just show what's happened here. Now that dotted line is the 28 volts where we did not want to drop below. So we've dropped below that. The 200 watt case steady state is going to cause our, our audio amplifier to clip because when the voltage comes up, it's going to be modulated by this power supply like that. We don't like that, so we don't want that. Now the other thing is, you see the this you know these uh, harmonics again let's just look at those real quick I guess first we'll capture the voltage here let's see what happened here now we're at 28.7 volts so we dropped down 28.7 and 6.28 volts peak to peak let's go ahead and turn it back on real quick just to see how close these things match turn on the power supply you see the voltage here now I'll turn on the power. I'm going to turn on the scope again let it capture the signal again. Okay, I'm going to turn the power supply back on. Whoops, let me turn off the load. That just discharged the capacitor. Okay, so now let me turn it on. 
Okay, we turned it on right into two, 200 watts. Let's do it. Boom. Okay, so it dropped way down. Now it's coming back up. We'll wait just a moment, but here, let me turn off these menus, give more screen back. 28.3 volts and about 28.2. So, slight difference because of the power drop across the lead here. The scope's reading right over at the load, and I mean, the scope's reading right over there, the uh, capacitor, and this guy's reading over here where it's loading down, so you expect it to be a little bit different. 28.9, 28.5. It's not too bad though. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and freeze this again. And we got seven amps. Okay, so the harmonics is something I wanted to show you. So let's uh, tie the cursors to the harmonics. I can move, um, so this frequency right here, let's move the cursors over. Let's go to those. And I'll move this cursor right there if you can see it. And it's, if you look up here, it's 119, about 120 hertz. So 60 hertz is there, but once you go through the bridge rectifier, you get a double pulse from the full bridge uh, for the full wave rectifier, right? So the full wave rectifier gives us 120 hertz. So that's what we're seeing there, 120 hertz, 4.4 dB. Okay, then we, then we, well, here, hold on a sec. I'll select this other cursor, bring it over to this next big pulse. Now it's a 240, so that is um, the, okay, so that's the second harmonic of 120, right? It's 2x, 120. Now here, let me lock those cursors together and I can bring these guys over so I can put that guy where he says 240 and the next one's at 360. It's off just a little bit, I guess. I got the cursor off just a touch, but you can see, so that's, another, that's the third harmonic. And then this will be the fifth, okay? That's about uh, 480. And so on. So we just seventh and ninth and so on. So you can see how big those harmonics are, but yeah, that's created by this uh, sawtooth. Okay, guys, so now let's do the transient, because remember, 200 watts is really just an audio transient. So let's do this. And what I want to do is I want to. Uh, go back to 100 watts. I'm going to set that. 100 watts. Let's turn that off. We're going to turn on the power. Okay, the power's up. Okay, I'm going to turn on the 100 watts. Okay, now let's, what we're going to do is kind of simulate, you know, 100 watts continuous power, and then all of a sudden we get a 200 watt transient. But I'm really going to go 200 watts steady state, and here I'll walk you through it. Here, let's go to a single trigger. Now, you see my trigger point was just underneath let me go back here see the triggers point is just below because I'm expecting that to drop so do that now I'm gonna go ahead and hit the uh, up arrow get 200 watts boom see it captured it there so now I'll go ahead and turn off this load let the power spike cool off I'm gonna go ahead and turn off power too now the capacitor is discharged and I can turn on load and discharge it quickly okay I'll turn it back off all right, well, so you see what happened? We're operating up here, that ripple up there. Here, let me tie the cursors to the voltage again. Just touch that and it makes them yellow. So this bottom line, the dash one was 128 volt, or 28.3 volts, right? So you see how it dropped below that dash line? This is what we're looking at steady state, but you see the, it took, you know, it looked like it probably turned on during this waveform somewhere. So it took, this first pulse did not quite drop low, and then the next one did. So the capacitor is charging, and then discharging, charging, discharge, and so as it discharged here, it kind of discharged past that line. So actually, we got some time a transient here where we're above that line. So is that enough of a transient? That's the question, I guess. Let's move the cursors over and see how much time we have there. Okay, I'm going to say, I'm going to say it triggered right there, let's just say. So, and then it kind of dropped below. I'm, I'm going to say, okay, did it, I'm going to give the benefit of doubt, saying it's above the line right there, or even if not, just slightly. And then right here, we dropped the line. 
So we have this time right here. So I'm in time, so percentage, so that's time, seconds. So up here, the time between cursors is 12 milliseconds. So 10 milliseconds is 20 hertz. It looks like we could get about one big bass 20 hertz boom before this happens. Now this is steady state, so if, if you know, the 20 hertz, there's, you know, it's, there's 10 milliseconds on, 10 milliseconds off, so this guy would actually have time to charge again. So it'd probably be good for, you know, a little bit, but not, maybe not enough, right? So let's put that bigger capacitor on, and I think this is really what we're going to be looking for. Let's try that. Actually, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, put this on reference so that we can compare this to the two capacitors. Let's save this one so we can do that. So we'll put it on a reference. I'm going to put it on three. I'm using the other one. So I'm going to say save to reference three. Select that and save it. All right, so now we'll put the other capacitor in and then we'll compare it to this waveform. Okay, there we go. There's reference three, the white one. Okay, so let's do that. Okay guys, so what we're going to do is just go back to 100 watts. Alright, so I just wanted to start off at 100 watts and see what that looks like, okay? So put the scope back in run mode and throw the power switch. And there's our unloaded output voltage. So let's go ahead and apply the 100 watts. Okay, that, you know, seems like it's a little bit better than the single capacitor. Let's write those down, and I'll show you the notes after. Now, one thing to point out is 2 volts peak to peak, 32.3 volts. So the 2, point, the two volts kind of bounce between 2 volts, yeah, 2.28, 2 volts. Uh, before we saw it bounce between 3.4 and 3.6, so we have improved that. Okay, now... Let's go to 200 watts and capture that. We'll do it steady state first. Okay, 200 watts, there we go. There's the seven amps, back to, but now, look at this, the, you can see how the yellow is above the white, so it's it's staying on up higher, right? It's not sagging as far, so that's great. Now, you can see the ripple is 3.4. That's about what it was at 100 watts before. We, just, we improved about 2x, I'd say. All right, so that's, okay, so that's looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and uh, turn it off for a moment. So now, let's go back and see, try to capture this again, okay? I'm gonna put 100 watts, let it stabilize, and then we'll go to 200 watts and capture this thing again, all right? So let's do that again. Go back to 100 watts here. Okay, we're 100 watts there. Now let's go ahead and turn it on. All right, and you can see how it's better than, here I'll turn off the cursor. You can see how it's better than what it was before. Before, we were, we were on this white waveform. So we have less ripple now. And then we dropped down like this when we went to 200 watts. So let's go to single trigger and let's go ahead and bump it to 200 watts and see what the transient looks like. 200. I'll turn it off since it froze the scope. See, what, after single triggers it freezes up. Alright, so it looked like it was here, started to sag down and then kind of maintain this voltage here. Okay, let's turn on the cursors and see how we did. Oops, we want the other cursors, the bars. Okay, now this bottom one's a 28.3. So look, even the yellow one starts to drop below. It did a lot better job. It stayed up quite a while, but right around in here, it starts to dip below the line. So let's turn off the reference for now so we can just look at the yellow, the new one. Turn off that guy. Okay, and I'll turn off, I'll get rid of this menu so we can look at that look. So there we go. So now it took, you know, it took a little more time for it to start to drop down. So let's try to measure that with our cursors. 
Now my cursor window kind of popped up, so I'm going to move this waveform over. I'm just going to scoot it over. And I'm going to say, I'm going to put this right on the first cursor. I'm going to say that everything looked fine and right about there we switched on. Okay, so now we want to move this guy over to, let's get back to the horizontal bars. So right about there. Right about, this one just barely hits, and I'd say there we're kind of crossed, and even that one's just touching. We could all go all the way over here, but I'll, I'll just hit this one. Oops, let me go to those bars, and we'll say that one just barely touched. I'd say even that one's just touching, but we'll go ahead and stop there. So the time between that is 38.4 milliseconds now. Now you got to remember that's steady state. So if this was audio, there's the beats are going to be on, off, on, off. It's not going to be a steady 200 watts. So, you know, I think the other capacitor might have been fine. This one definitely gives a lot more robustness, right? And and less ripple, which I think may be good for the power supply as well. So for 200 watts, it only took two 6800 microfarad caps. Not too bad. All right, you see the voltage is sagging a little bit, but I want to discharge that cap, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it on, and it's drained it down to zero. I'll leave it on for just a moment. You know, capacitors are kind of like batteries. Uh, you notice how batteries discharge, and then you turn off power and you turn back on. They kind of self-charge. Capacitors kind of do that too. They kind of have a self-charge to them. So uh, if I turn it off. You'll see, if we sit here, it'll come up a little bit, but you know, it's only usually a, a volt, maybe. Nothing really dangerous, I guess, but anyway. Okay, so that looks like it discharged pretty well. Now let me show you the, uh, the results on our notebook. Okay, so for our test results, what I did is I made a table here. This is one capacitor, one capacitor, and two caps and two caps, so we could kind of compare side by side. These are the readings I took off the scope under here, and these are the readings I took off the cunk and load. And here's a 100 watt case, and here's a 200 watt case. So when I had 100 watts, the cunk and load showed 32.87 with one cap, and with two caps, it was 32, so it was a little bit less. Interesting, right? Okay, now if we look over here on the scope, one cap showed 33 volts with 3.4 volts peak to peak and two caps a little bit less here but only two volts peak to peak so it did not dip as much now these are astro readings the astro reading was reading the voltage off the bridge rectifier what I got is 27.15 volts RMS and with two caps a little bit lower again kinda goes along with these two things so with 200 we got 28.7 and a little bit higher this time and the ripple went from 3.4 to 6.28 with one cap and over here went from 2 to 3.4 which this was the same as this and this is the readings off the Astro so 100 watt versus 200 with one cap it's a little bit lower here we're dropping about half a volt because 200 watts we're losing some voltage across the transformer and same over here we're losing almost a volt here not quite but so that's the readings we got off the meters okay so now let's look a little deeper at our efficiency and power quality and so on now this is a 100 watt case over here the power quality meter said 122.9 volts going in 1.23 amps RMS going in, power factor is 0.78. So when we multiply these two numbers together, these two input, the voltage and current, you know, volts times amps normally is watts, but in this case it's volt amps because they're not in phase with each other. So we get 151.17 VA, but we only got the power factor says it's putting out 118.4 watts. But if you multiply this VA with the power factor, VA times power factor, you get about 118 watts. 
which is about right. That's why when you select a transformer, you need a higher VA rated transformer than your output power you require because of this uh, power factor problem. Now when you go higher in power, it actually gets a little bit better. It's 0.835. Now the voltage is a little bit lower because we've got some voltage loss with the current. So the current's about double, 2.53. And if we multiply this volts and this current, VA we get 307.9 VA so look at that 307 VA transformers rate 250 right you know of course there's headroom in these rating that's why we could we're able to do this now if we multiply that by the power factor we get 257 watts about which is about right so now if you look at the efficiency in both these cases 100 watts is what we actually had on our load but uh, 818 watts was coming into the transformer so it's about 85 percent of efficiency and in this case 200 watts divided by 257 is about 78 percent so a little bit less with higher current you get more what we call ir drops current is i r resistance so i times r is volts so you get more voltage drops across your elements you know we have a thermistor uh, doesn't drop much, but a little bit. The transformer drops some, and the bridge rectifier drops some. If we have a couple volts with, you know, we always have at least two diodes turned on, right? So if you're averaging, say, 7 amps in the output case of the 200 watts, 7 amps times, say, 2 volts, and it'd probably be a little bit higher than that on the bridge on those two diodes, so that's 14 watts just on the bridge rectifier. So that's that's going to make that bridge rectifier a little warm, and that's why it's metal and it gets put on a heat sink. Yeah, we're losing you know about 57 watts in this case, and over here we're losing about 18 watts. So you can see now why you know another reason why when you select a transformer for say an audio application you need to consider power factor and efficiency. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this series, if you got some ideas, give me a thumbs up, let me know. It's just right down there, hit that thumbs up, that helps. And give me your ideas, okay? Uh, comments, thanks guys. Hey, thanks for watching.